support worker um, at the Centre Project. The Centre Project, um, for those of you that don't know, is a very small charity in the city centre that works with isolated and vulnerable people. It has two main strands of work. One strand is working with adults within the community, and the other strand is Leicester Unaccompanied Child Initiative, which focuses on the needs of unaccompanied asylum seeking children. And it's about um, reducing isolation through the Freedom Club. It's about um, supporting them to overcome any issues that may be affecting their attendance at school and access and education and to provide accessible information, practical and emotional support to be able to adapt to life in the UK. Can everybody hear me okay? Because it's quite loud here. Okay, okay so the Freedom Club, um, which is what I'm going to focus on today, is a specialist drop-in for unaccompanied asylum-seeking children aged 12 to, um, 12 to 20. Um, we go right up to 20 because we recognise that there are some people who are more than 18 who are transitioning into adult services and need extra support at that time. We meet twice a week. Um, we have over 200 people that have registered with us. Um, and each session we get up to 30 young people coming to, to the club. Um, we provide social space where young people can meet their friends, they can socialise, they can um, have access to staff who understand their situation. Um, pool, table tennis, um, and we also have volunteers that provide um, English and educational support, homework support, and we have an IT suite where you know, people can go and do their homework or they can get support from our volunteers to develop their IT skills. And they can also watch YouTube and passion films and things to connect with their own culture there as well. Um, if I just give you a little bit of background about how the club started, um, back in 2006, um, a foster care approached us because he'd heard of the work that we were doing with isolated people um, and had a young person that was, um, was very under-occupied and was in need of getting out of the house and being able to engage in different activities. That young person wasn't in school so they weren't getting much interaction with young parents. Um, and it was agreed that that young person could come to the club. And since then, by word of mouth, the club has just grown and grown and grown. We don't go out and recruit people. We don't, um, we don't do outreach to try and persuade people what, what they need to come to the club for. It's all completely through word of mouth, which for me is very different to everywhere else that I've worked. Everywhere else where I've worked, you have a service where you go out and you tell people about your service and then they can come to it. Um, and it also meant that by the time that we had funding, we had a worker in place, it was also a year plus since the young people started coming. So the young people themselves had very firmly established the purpose of what they wanted the club to be. They wanted it to be a place where they could come, they could relax, they could meet their friends, um, to chill out really. Um, and that meant as a worker coming into that situation, we're not defining what the club is because it's already there for us. What I'm trying to do is sort of apply good practice and, and try and develop it in a way that, that the young people would would want, but that's quite a different dynamic, I think, to working in a lot of other places. Okay, so I put challenges um, here, and I'm not sure that challenges is, is the right word. It seems like a bit negative for me, um, and I think if you had a preconceived <coughs> idea of what a club for young people should be, you might find some of these things as challenges to overcome. But for me, it's part of the work environment, it's um, part of the context, of it. And, and what makes our club a little bit different to all the other clubs even the clubs that specialise in supporting the company jumping. So firstly there's um, a language barrier. Most of the staff and volunteers are um, English speaking. All of the young people, it's an additional language for them. Um, young people arrive, sometimes they arrive the day after they've arrived in the country and they'll, they'll be in clubs, so we do see people very soon after they've arrived. Um, and, and so there are some issues around communication. Um, and then the young people that are coming, they're coming to a completely different place, a completely different to anything they've experienced before. Um, so whereas young people who've grown up here, been through the education system here, they're used to if they apply to join a, or if they go to join a, a club, like scouts or school or um, another youth club, they're expecting that people ask their name, they'll ask their address, they'll ask them who's responsible for them if they're under 16, and that their parents will consent to them. Um, to, Join the, um, join the club or participating in activities. And this is new information for, for a lot of our young people. Um, they, they, there's a little bit of distrust of that. Um, they don't have the same expectations around consent that um, young people that would grow up here would be aware of. Um, and also with participation, it can be more um, their perception is, well, you're in charge, you decide what we're doing. And, 
that's where I was looking at, well, no, this is a club for everybody and we all need to decide together. Um, and also their experience of what the options might be. So when we talk to them about what activities they might like to do, they don't really have a lot of experience to know what the choices are. Um, a, a lot of them, um, as well, when, when I first started, they would come in, they would talk to each other, um, and then they would go again, and we'd kind of be like, well, um, they'd, they'd be lucky if they spoke to me. Um, so we've worked really hard to try and engage them to, um, to engage with the staff because um, the staff and volunteers where we work are the people that are going to be there um, providing them with information and interpreting some of the, the things that they're coming across in this new culture that they've, they've come to. So that's a lot of information that needs to come from that person. Um, and, and also it's taken a long time for them to trust us. Um, when, when, you know, when I first started there were a lot of rumours going around like we had cameras in the night, we were reporting to police stations and all sorts of um, all sorts of things that were wildly, wildly not true, um, and it's taken us a while for us to build up the trust to sort of commit and follow through on all the actions that we've agreed with them. Um, and now, three years down the line, we, we're starting to see the benefits of that. Now we've got a lot better engagement and um, a lot higher levels of trust. But you still see it with the new people when they're very newly arrived. You still see that you've got work to do there to um, engage them and to build up their trust. Um, for us, group work has, has always been difficult, having a, a sort of large group of um, young men, and it is all men that come to the club, um, who quite often speak very little English, um, to, to, to get them to engage at a start point until an end point um, it is something that they, they struggle with in terms of their concentration, in terms of their understanding. Um, and also if it's work that goes from one week to the next to the next, they have a lot of appointments and commitments and things, and, it, and it's hard for them to, to make that commitment to manage. Through, um, alongside their personal organisation skills as well, which they need. Um, the other thing about our club is that it's a very diverse group. You may think it's all Afghan boys, but in actual fact, we have Pashtuns, we have Tajiks, we have Uzbeks, um, we have Zaras, and we have uh, different groups of people who have a history of conflict with each other. And this is something we're trying to manage and, and work with within the, the club. Um, and most of all, the young people that come to our club are quite transient. Um, a lot of local authorities place children in Leicester that aren't local, so young people may be moving back to their local authorities and they may again later come back to Leicester. They may move around a lot within their um, foster places and sort of their care. So we see young people, and then we might not see them again for two or three years and then they'll come back. Okay, so how have we responded to these challenges? Well, firstly, um, what we try really hard to do is be consistent. We always open at the same time on the same days every week so that young people get into a pattern of knowing where and when we are. Um, and also we're consistent in our behaviour. So we, do, we, we are very keen to be seen as not to decide with one particular group or another. We are equitable to, to everybody that comes to the club. Um, and that is really, we feel really important if young people are moving around quite a lot. Um, they may have four or five foster carers in a year. They may change schools several times with the one place where they can go and it's always the same and it's consistent and they know what to expect. Um, and the second thing that, that we do is we do everything, all the activities that we do, we do on a drop-in basis. So we don't expect people to be here at, at a certain time and leave at a certain time. We tend to go and be in the club, but we don't expect them to do an activity for a certain period of time. So all the activities that we do within the club are drop-in. So whether it's artwork, whether it's English, um, whatever we're doing, it's in a table on the side of the room and they can dip in and out as they feel they can concentrate on it or as they feel their friends are doing it and they're missing out or whatever their reasons for they can dip in and out. Um, and also being quite a small organisation, we've got a lot of flexibility to meet need. We don't need to send things up to a head office and get approved and turn back down again. Um, so for example, at the moment, a lot of young people are coming and saying they want help with their theory tests. Um, so volunteers are working around that with them at the moment, so that's something that we can immediately put into place for them. Um, and in terms of participation, um, as I say, group work is difficult and focus groups are, are difficult in terms of their concentration, but we do it in lots of different ways. Um, we'll do simple questions and we'll just, um, like at Christmas we got them to write just a sentence on a, on a card and pin it up which talks what they're thinking about the club. Um, we'll do ballots, we'll do votes, we'll do different things that they can engage just for a very short period of time, um, which gives us information and then come back to follow up. So the more creative activities that we do, 
Um, we do things like, um, we have an artist that comes and works with us every year, um, and this is some of the, the artwork that, that she's produced with the young people. Um, we do poems, we've had a worker come and make a film with a young person about the youth club. Um, and a lot of the work we did, particularly initially, was around giving a sense of identity to the club. So they named the club the Freedom Club after the Freedom to Make Choices. Um, and so what we've done is, this is an individual piece of artwork which come together to form a, uh, something that represents everybody within the club. And the influences there are Arabic writing, it's Pashto, um, it's Somalia, it's, it's things that are important to them that they want to, to bring to the group. Um, this one down here represents them coming to England and all the different things that they do at the club. Um, this one was a, a logo competition that we never, never really got a, a very clear logo out of, but we had a lot of quite nice artwork, um, which again reflected and got them thinking about what the club's for, how they how they use the club, and who the other people are that come to the club, and how we can work together. Um, so that's one of the more important things about the um, creative activities that we do. Um, and I would encourage you to look at some of the poems that are in the main hall as well, um, that the young people have written about coming to club. Secondly, um, it gives them a chance to connect with their own culture. So a lot of the activities we do, we try and be influenced by things that will be in their background. So um, we've had kite making workshops and then we all went to Happy Park to try and fly them. Um, this is one of the young people plays the tabla really well and has written songs about his experience that, um, and he'll come and play parties and things that we have for the young people. Um, and this one, can anybody read this one? Uh, I think some Pashtu, it's um, some poems. We had um, some Pashtu poets come up from London and do some work with the young people. Um, it's maybe where Afghanistan has quite an, a tradition of oral poetry. Um, and that was quite well received when we went to London to see them. And so we invited them to come back to our club and share um, some of their techniques with the young people at the club. Um, we have quite a lot of spontaneous poetry as well, I have to say, just quite nice. Um, the other um, thing that is is really important is that it can give young people a voice. Um, as Fraser said, we're part of Young People Seeking Safety um, network, and every year during Young People Seeking Safety, we, we like to have something that represents young people's viewpoints on display. Um, so this was something we had like a graffiti wall that they were all able to, to write on. Um, but unfortunately it was too large because it was life size, too big for us to display anywhere. So um, we had to do a cut and paste job with the photographs to create this extra bit of artwork. Um, the ones here that are just saying, be safe, be careful, take care. Um, and again, it's an opportunity to um, get people to listen to, to what their viewpoint is. And finally, um, it's new experiences for people. Some young people have come and discovered they have fantastic skills in metalwork, art. We've had a number of young people get A's um, in their GCSEs. Um, and this is the last exhibition we had before the one that, that Pfizer showed you. Um, it was called Safe to Dream and it travelled around the city. Um, but it, it represented um, some of the young people's viewpoints about coming to the UK, seeking safety, and the possi very real possibility of being returned once they get 18 as well. Um, so some of the things you saw on the previous slide were about their things about, about that. Um, and, and the young people commented that they never really thought they would have the experience of having their art displayed and having the mayor come and open it and talk to them about, about their artwork and they, they were very um, very excited to, to meet the mayor and, for him and to have the um, experience of him coming to appreciate the work that they've done. So, um, the final slide. so just to summarise, um, I think People come and look at our club and they, they think, well, this is really instructive, this is, um, how does this work? But what we've actually got is a club where the purpose was defined by the young people and has been structured by them for their needs. And we're just trying to catch up really as workers and bring good practice to it um, and hopefully take it, take it further together. Has anybody got any questions? Well, we were funded by Diana Memorial. Um, that funding is end, this funding stream is ending now. Um, so we're currently looking for new funding. We're unfunded at the moment and we are relying on the open if it wasn't for our volunteers who have shown quite a lot of dedication to us, which is very appreciative. But um, yes, it's difficult times. Yeah.
You said it's it's all men's. It's specifically set up for young uh, for young no, people. No, no, we have to. Is it just the way it's happened? The majority of other companies, young people are men. Right. Um, because of the overland journey. Yeah. And, and yeah. We have to go yeah, to get we, we do have occasionally our trained girls that, that yes. come, but we usually only have one at a time. And then yes. we have to put a lot of support into her, but it's yeah. not really a social environment for her, so um, no. it, it is difficult to, to support it, it, those, it is, those isn't girls. It? Yeah. Um, but no, we, I mean, we're open to anybody, anybody's able to come to the club, um, but we specifically yeah. go out of our way to support the other company. Mm. I should just say as well, we're having an open day tomorrow if anybody's free between 2 and um, 6 o'clock. 2 and 6.30 I think it is tomorrow. Um, yeah, so we'd be very happy to show you around the clubs and show you some of the artwork. And when you say anyone, so, so it's not specifically for unaccompanied no. people? No, we would not no, turn somebody it. away right. if they so turned up and said it's quite British or It's right. essentially it's a, a young people's group, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, but we are just extremely popular with yeah. unaccompanied young people because we have an understanding of their needs yeah. and because they've been... So that's like specialist, specialist yeah. specialists there, yeah. Yeah. And is it Leicester or does it cover Leicestershire? Um, well, we're based in the city centre. Yeah. We don't we don't really have criteria other than you have to be between 13 and 20 um, to be able to access it. So if people live in the county and they, they, they want to pop in, in yeah. they, they're yeah. welcome to pop in. Um, we have young people that have moved away and they come sometimes from Coventry or Bedford. Yeah. Or, that's nice, um, that's nice they, actually. They I think that, that's, so. that's really good to be able to do that. Because mm. mm. I mean, with this group of young people, they are um, mm. they do dip in and out services yeah. because of their mm. ages sometimes change. and. Uh, um, not able to access mm. certain things because of yeah. all the sort of criteria for different services. Mm. Um, whereas, as long as they're the right age, we've been well, it's a good way of engaging. I mean, I work in mental health, and, and that sort of approach is is very good for engaging with people like, where they think they can come back mm. again, even though they they might not have been there for a while yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that reflects in the rest of the group a bit because people see that, don't they? It's stability, which mm. is what I they don't have in the research project that came across like a lot of the things that the club offers mm -hmm. were things that they found really useful and mm -hmm. kind of in terms of the positive relationships and having places that were containing where they could have fun safely um, were things that really came across in the research. Yeah. It sounds brilliant, doesn't it? I mean, the attendance is fantastic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That attendance, that, those numbers attending. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's I think really good. being able to kind of have research alongside things like that really kind of gives it that kind of support, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Something mm -hmm. you're planning to use with funding and, and to kind of advertise yourselves and yeah. different things. And I, I think that's where research can be really useful, yeah. kind of working together. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you think, but I yeah, think no, it no, works I well. Think, <laughs> no, I think it's really useful too. Yeah, I think it's, because it's based in the city centre, it's accessible for everyone. So mm -hmm. when they leave the college or school, they come and catch bus yeah. from the city centre so they can pop in before they go. Yeah. So I think that because of where it's situated, if it was in a corner or some place in Leicester, I don't think it would be that I popular. Think where we are now on Granby Street is the perfect location for this group because they congregate either at the clock tower or in Spinney Hill Park, and we're right in the middle of that track between the two. So. I Could I just ask, sorry, just one more question because I wrote it down. Um, it, do what, what what do you do if, if, if um, or how do you deal with any issues that might come up that are probably health related, say psychological or emotional problems that someone might have, or even even probably physical health problems? I mean, if they sort of I don't know disclose to you, or I mean, do you have it, ways of helping to? Yeah, to well, we be, have a close uh, work relationship with Cam. We have Cam's worker that comes in very right. regularly, and she will sit and talk about any concerns, right, that we have. Yeah. and they'll. Um, some input into the volunteers as well about how to manage yeah. if you see somebody self-harming or yeah, um, yeah. we had some training on managing sleep as well because that's mm. a big issue yeah. for, for the yeah. what I would have thought with, with say with the the, the, the talk of when you're getting the, there's going to be a lot of stuff like that as soon as they start to relax yeah. isn't it once you while your defence is up you're holding it all in but once you start to then relax then you're joining in suddenly yeah. it comes through it doesn't it yeah, I think that's what a lot of the young people spoke about, kind of having a mixture of emotions that they can be, you know, kind of adapting and settling, but actually there's a lot of these other feelings that are coming um, as a result of that and kind of being able to manage that um, is something that's really important, wasn't it? Kind of about not 
being able to sleep. Or kind of, mm. They were very good big at one, kind of big one, and a dangerous one as well. Yeah. You know that yeah. black and white, it's it, you know yeah. lack of sleep. It's it. Yeah. Yeah. Course, but they were problems. very good at kind of talking about that, which I thought was really important because there's a lot of research within a company in mind that kind of talks, kind of says, or implies that young people won't be able to talk about their feelings or be able to make those connections. But actually, it wasn't something I specifically asked about, but that was something that mm -hmm. came across. And I think it does challenge the way that we think about young people and what mm -hmm. they are capable of. Doing and, not doing. and also the environment you created, because I think a lot of it, if people feel safe, then they can talk. If it, you yeah. know, people feel safe and trust. It's the, it's the biggie, isn't it? Yeah, which is why I, I thought it was really important to volunteer, because um, mm -hmm. the young people knew me better. It was easier yeah. for them to talk, and, mm -hmm. and I think it is important to think about all these same things that yeah. we think about in practice, in research as well, because you're going to get a much better understanding yeah. of what's happening and, and some and research is more widely looked at that's where services come from mm. and it's really important to be able to capture that mm. the best way you can really and mm. I, I think yeah places like the, the center project do that really well so being able to jump on the back of it has been quite good i think, I think it's fantastic was there any things when you did your research i've to ask this actually that um that you th that were unexpected or very unexpected findings or something that made you think Oh, didn't see that coming. I didn't think it, you know. Sometimes you get when you're doing research, you sometimes get like a yeah. It's not part. It's like a bit at the side, but it's quite significant. It suddenly thinks it's almost like it could be prompts a research yeah. project on its own. Yeah, I think um, the, especially the things about being a child, being able to be a child safely, and just having fun. Mm. That that was mentioned so much that it it essentially became its own sub theme. I thought that yeah. was really important and something that you kind of take for granted. There were other things um, that probably surprised me in terms of things that weren't talked about, things that I expected and, and then they weren't discussed at all. Um, so I think a lot of the time you can come into research or any services where we have our own assumptions. Um, so I had to be really careful not to kind of place that across. And yeah. I think that's why it was really helpful with having the photographs because it wasn't my agenda. It mm. was their agenda and they were able to put that across. So it that was their idea. voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think it worked really well in the end. It was it was hard mm -hmm. um, because Anderson said they can be quite difficult to engage with. Mm -hmm. So kind of getting a young people, a young person to fill in a consent form, take it home, mm -hmm. give them a camera, get the camera back, and then organise an interview. There were so many different stages so, with it, yeah. and people dropping out at different <coughs> stages. So oh, yeah, well. lots of times when I was quite worried, I wouldn't have a research yeah, project. Um, and why was I so silly to be clever and do this kind of <laughs> method? But actually, in the end, I, I really happy with it. it. Yeah, it was really worth, worth it. But I think that's interesting. That thing about fun, hold on to that because I think sometimes those things that come out. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can cross that in working in mental health. It's quite significant. That is quite significant. The people that that have gone through a lot of trauma or abuse or oppression or whatever. Mm -hmm. A fun element, recognising that there needs to be something where people can. Yeah. But it's therapeutic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, um,